Historically, the industry has been uh, tracking performance data very closely. Performance data is, is essential. Uh, it's tied to um, the project pro forma, uh, project financials, um, investment returns, and that makes sense for the industry to develop as a whole. So for the last 15 years, as an industry, we've been prioritizing having a good way of tracking this performance. Um, However, from our uh, point of view, I think there's a layer of information that enhances that performance data, which comes from the field. And that's what we call like uh, field intelligence data. And um, those are, you know, in, any data points that get uh, collected from the construction to the operations of the project throughout construction, the different phases, different milestones to operations that are related to quality, safety, and reliability. But the benefit of using a, a singular uh, platform and a single source of, of this data, it allows us, like you mentioned, to see things from a zoomed out or macrocosm view to, to look at what are the trends, where, where are the biggest areas uh, for improvement, um, and how can we tighten up our, um, our contracts, our policies, our um, minimum design standards, um, so that we get ahead of these issues. And that's been a really cool thing to see um, because it, it basically, um, it, it allows us to stop the problem before it even happens. And we're starting to see the benefits of that. But you, um, looking at this slide, uh, we're seeing 10 most common issues on new constructions going from, you know, uh, labels missing, duct seal, uh, grounding missing, uh, wire terminations, uh, and you also, uh, can uh, see the breakdown by severity of the issue. So the yellow bars uh, uh, are associated to majors on uh, the critical uh, are in orange. So for example, you see on, on one of the most common issues on operating assets, uh, these are hotspots. Within the report, we'll dr drill down even farther on this data and, uh, and it gets pretty detailed. We're very excited because this, there's a lot of information there, a lot of like eye-opening um, data on you know, key takeaways that I think we all should reflect on and, and start like questioning how can we improve uh, those results. Here uh, we see an example of, um, again, the um, over torque, under torque, back nut on the neck level side of things. Uh, this was uh, associated to a one finding. So it's one instance of uh, a um, over torque back nut with signs of uh, pliers in the back nut, which tells that probably they didn't torque it with the right tools. However, they, they you know, they did torque it. It's over torque that might cause problems down the road. That could be cracking on the on the body of the connector that will allow moisture ingress and corrosion on the pins over ten years, fifteen years. So it's not something that is gonna. The risk level is, is negligible. You want to know that you want to know about it. But it's not the same as the next one, for example, where we find now a specific two instances of under torque back nuts. So that tells you they clearly didn't follow uh, proper process and procedures. And these connectors are already compromised to get, um, you know, uh, water ingress uh, potentially and uh, create, again, corrosion on a potential failure point. Small problems or negligible issues can become um, issues over time when, when um when not corrected or or maintained properly. And so, you know, this is a, a you know, an example of why we've started to, you know, establish checkpoints um, earlier on in the project life cycle, because again, finding and correcting an issue at the very beginning or before it even happens is uh, is in no uncertain terms, much easier and cheaper to do than it is to, uh, correct on the on the right side of the page where you've already gotten a critical failure.